the corns. <coughs> so, a uh, question was asked, and this is before I go over the scope. How do you upload midterm work? Well, in your midterm exam here, this is under the assignments tab over here on the right. Uh, you have upload midterm work. You would click on that. Uh, so this is the reason for this, by the way, is so that if you do, let's say less than stellar, I can look at what you've done, look at your answers and maybe give you partial credit. And that's important because you need to get that 60, 50 or 60% to go on to the next part. <clears throat> so you had start. Uh, so you have to upload your work. So there's a cam scanner. You can download it's iOS and Android compatible. Um, small PDF will let you also move JPEGs to PDF or to merge PDFs into one file. You need one file. Um, and place it. You could also uh, use Word to do this as well. Um, so you just choose file and you go to someplace that has a PDF, like here's random PDFs, click on it, and then you'd submit it. That's what you do. That's how you upload your final or your midterm rather. So I need the your midterm work when you're done with it, the lead page. So that being said, let me stop sharing screen so I can tell you about um, the scope because the scope is important. Um, the scope should be, I mean, you'll be doing the review. You should know <clears throat> specific questions, but we're going to actually go over the type as well because I want to make sure you know before going in what to do. Um, I'm just waiting on my computer. I think the internet is slow. I know Facebook is down and WhatsApp and a bunch of other things. Uh, are the formulas going to be given to us? Like, you know how in the reviews and in the problems we do, they give us that formula and then we, uh, before the question? I will see. Well, I'm actually going to go, through. what I'm doing right now is I turned off my screen and I'm going through the midterm when I talk about the scope. So I'll answer that when I get to them. If not, All right, thank you. assume that, assume no, unless I tell you yes. How about that? Uh, so, uh, one is, uh, so we have car value, one of those car value questions where you have a value and you have depreciation or appreciation as your money go up, as your money go down, all that nonsense. Um, so, uh, so be, being able to take and put an answer or determine is something increasing or decreasing based off of uh, a formula. Uh, so we have, it looks like, no, you do not get the formula. So I would do that in your notebook, write down all the formulas for everything. So if you, put, uh, so this is a, uh, second one is an interest question. Uh, uh, depreciation. So you have your final, you have your money decrease, how long until you get to that point. Uh, Converting pounds to kilograms, they give you the conversion of a pound to a kilogram and kilogram to pound. Uh, so there's a Celsius to Fahrenheit and they do give you the formula from Fahrenheit to Celsius, but not Celsius to Fahrenheit. <clears throat> uh, convert uh, within the metric system. So like from meters to kilometers, that kind of thing. Uh, convert within the standard system, I'm sorry. So like pounds to tons, gallons to cups, stuff like that. Um, so no, I know, I see weight in here. I don't know if anything else. Um, uh, a sale on a sale. That's a fun one. Um, and I'll let me make a note of that one and I will run that as a problem because that's a weird one. So we're going to there's sale on a sale. And then, uh, so I'll run, I'll run through one of those questions and show you how to do those. And if you have to take like a GRE, 
that will help you or any standardized tests because they do these all the time. <coughs> um, uh, this is uh, applying a reduction of percentage to an overall budget, calculating API, APY, uh, converting miles per hour to feet per second, uh, solving for variables, mortgage payments. Uh, so the mortgage payments questions that we had earlier. Um, uh, a increase in parts per million and percentage increase based off of those numbers. Sales tax, final tax. Characteristics of linear and exponential equations. So when you have the y equals mx plus b versus when you have um, the, you know, you're increasing by 20% each year type questions. So we have both of those. Um, Some of the uh, the withdrawal questions from the last chapter. So you end with you want to withdraw, you know, sixty thousand dollars a year for twenty years. You earn three percent interest. How much do you need? That type of question. Uh, the value of an investment after a set number of years and simple and compounded. Um, Calculating miles per gallon and then extrapolating how many gallon miles you can go on a certain amount of gallons or how many gallons to drive a certain number of miles. Um, there is metric distance conversions again. Finding out how many pills to, to lower someone's temperature based on their weight oh dose is based on weight never mind um dosage based on weight <clears throat> and hourly wage after a set a number of years so those are the types of questions so one of them that was kind of weird so i'm going to go ahead and start doing this uh let's do a whiteboard i can just text it out so this is a weird one. I want to make sure you have a, something on it. So uh, if you're, oh, Ross is wonderful this, but uh, so are as well. If you have a sale where everything is 25% off, but there is an item that is an additional, 30% off, how much off is the item? <clears throat> so these types of questions are so much fun. Um, and if you are dealing with percentages, uh, and have no price, use $100. Because if you had to convert it into 100 anyway, you had to do that math, you might as well not do the math and let everything else do it for you. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's say I'm going to buy a TV. It's a some stupid sale. Like I'm buying like a 19 inch TV. Uh, so a 19 inch TV, this is just my mental thing, what I'm doing, is what we're using. So we have the $100 that it costs originally, and everything is 25%. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.75 because that's what the final price is going to be. So the original sale price is going to be $75. Now, on top of that, it's going to be an extra 30% off. 
So my final price is going to be one minus that point three or point seven. Calculating that. <clears throat> There's my calculator went behind people there. 75 times 0.7 is 52, $52.5 dollars. So if the TV was originally a hundred dollars, and after the two sales, I pay 5250, I could figure out. The percentage by subtracting 100 minus final price. So 100 minus 52.5 is equal to 47.5. So the sale was 47.5% off. So that one was a little bit weird. And that's why I saw that. I'm like, I probably better go over that because it would trip somebody up. So the reason that we use this $100 is so that when I got to the end, I didn't have to like assume everything was a dollar at the beginning and multiply. If you are dealing with percentages and they give you no base price, always assume your base price is 100. It will make your life so much easier because it just removes a step. And I could check it. So um, $100 times 0.475 would be equal to 47.50. So 100 minus 47.50 is equal to 52.50. So same price. <coughs> Um, that being said, so that is how we're going to do that type of question. So you take your original, like a hundred dollars, if they don't give you a price, use a hundred dollars times one minus your price for everything to get how much it would be before the second sale. And then take that number times one minus your second sale. And then that will give you your final price. You subtract 100 minus your final price, and that's the percentage that you're off. <coughs> um, and I think if you really wanted to do it, yeah. Another way to do it is 0.75 times 0.7 is equal to 0.525. So that's how much you pay originally. So one minus 0.525 is equal to 0.475. So on this one, you can multiply percentages and subtract from one. Both of those work the same way. That being said, does anyone have anything else you want me to go over? No, outside of conversions from Celsius to Fahrenheit, there are no formulas. I do have one that I always cannot figure out. I've done it over and over and I still cannot get the right answer. And I don't know if I'm doing something wrong with it or is it just by overlooking something? Okay. It's the total return value. It's that ending value minus the initial value divided by the, I think the initial value. Uh, do you have a, a set pro uh, set uh, like a problem that you're working on that has that so I can look at it? No, I got everything. I'm caught up, so I'm, I don't have any of that up and growing right now. It's just that's the one thing I kept getting wrong. Was, was that it? That was in. Do you know? Remember which section that was in? It was in the last the last assignment I did, which was a uh, chapter review. It was in the chapter review. Yeah, it was one of the ending questions, I think. Total return value. Oh, so like, uh, 
This one I have is Monica pays 18,000 for shares in a new company. She shares for 13,000. What's her total return on the investment? Yeah, and I plug it in the way it says it, but I always get the wrong answer and I don't know why. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? I'm gonna use my doggy coin again because I'm kind of curious what it's turned into. So I paid and you know, why not? So I paid, let's go ahead and clear this out. I had 72 times 0.06. So I paid $4.32 vested. I'm gonna put that in that because that's just hilarious. Uh, I sold because I'm not going to sell uh, at oh wow it's at 22 cents so $15.84 is that a coin, like the same thing as Bitcoin yeah it's a cryptocurrency uh, it started as a joke and actually turned real and it's kind of hilarious. Because I literally bought, like I bought the first part of it at 0.6 cents and I sold stupidly. And now it's worth 22 cents a coin. <clears throat> but anywho, it works for this. So the formula itself cares about your ending value minus your initial value. So if I sold my ending, is 1584. My initial is four dollars and 32 because that's when I invested, that's when I got it. That's the initial value. So uh, I over I. The formula is E minus I over I. So when you do this, if ending is greater, then initial positive numbers. If ending is less than initial negative numbers, you can get negatives. You can have a negative return on investments. Um, so I put 1584 minus 432 over 432. Give me eleven fifty two over four thirty two. Which means my overall would be I get a number of two point six eight six repeating. I get two point six repeating essentially. Remember, this is supposed to be a percentage. So I'm pretty sure they want it as a percentage, yes. So you take this times 100 would give me 266.67% increase. Using an example like what they had, if you paid $16,000 for stocks eight years ago, sold for 14,000. What is the, the I'm trying to make sure I get the right words. Total return. So on this one, since our ending is what we sold it for is less than our beginning, we're going to have a negative return. So 14,000 minus 16,000 divided by. <clears throat> so make sure you use the initial. So that 16,000. So that is probably might be where you're making a mistake as you put the, the first one, the 14,000 under it. 
or you can uh, mix up the order. Those are the usually the two big things. So that gives us 2,000 over 16,000 or one over eight. That. Which is 0.125. Sorry, negative 0.125. This is a negative number. When it asks the total return, what it's asking for, is it going to be just that number or a percentage? It, it's going to be a percentage. Five, which is equal to negative 12.5%. So you've lost 12.5% on your investment. Okay, I think you know where I'm going wrong is I'm, I didn't know that little bit of um, secret information that you just gave about the ending numbers being greater or the initial being um, less than, I didn't yeah. know that part. So that is where probably I tripped up. And the fact that you know I couldn't remember if I should uh, multiply by a hundred or not. So, okay, thank you for clarifying. Yep, no problem. That's kind of the point of doing this. Uh, any other things that you need help with? Any other issues that come up? I, do you want me to go over the stupid conversions again from like miles per hour to feet per second? Because I know people love those so much. And also how to stuck on one of the problems on that last review was the having to, you know, add or subtract or multiply or divide fractions. It's the adding in the subtracting subtract the fractions is what I get stuck on. Okay. Well, yeah, I haven't done those in a while. So I'll do the adding subtraction and then I'll do the conversion. So adding and subtracting fractions. Um, so they all, they both run on the same basic concept. If I'm going to add or subtract fractions. Oh, come on. Not that. So I'm gonna take one fourth and one third and add them. I, it's, it'd be the same as subtraction. I'm just gonna do one of both. So the thing we have to do is make sure that the denominator bottom number is the same. <clears throat> I usually do this by doing, taking all the numbers and multiply them out so three, it's like I can do four, eight, 12, 16, 20, just the first five numbers. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. And then I will look to see a number that's both in both columns. So I can take the four times three and three times four, give the same answer. So what I end up doing is I take three times one over four. And four times one over three. <sighs> so that's kind of what I end up doing. Uh, that gives us three over 12 and four over 12. And once I have the same denominator, I can add and subtract. So I had plus here, so that would mean I would get those seven over 12. So the big thing on this is to make sure that you convert your denominator to the same number on both of them by multiplying by one that will get you the same denominator. And at this point, if something can simplify, you simplify it. If it doesn't, you're done. Okay, that makes sense? Yes, thank you. 
Okay, and then everyone's favorite, ha 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 ha. How fast is that? Uh, how fast? Like feet per second. So I'm trying to make sure. Uh, let's do let's just make up a number because I Googling is making this take too long. So if we have somebody who can go actually let me do it this way. 14 miles per hour on a bike is how many feet per second? <sighs> so this is what we're gonna do. We draw the first thing we do is uh, put miles per hour into a fraction. So we do 14 miles for one hour. Then we want to cancel out either miles or hours with a conversion. So the easiest one to get rid of first, I hate to say it, is miles, because I know I can find out how many miles are in a, in a feet, or feet in a mile rather. Which is 5,280 feet. So on this, I would make sure I put mile on the bottom and 5,280 feet up top. So the idea here is I can cancel out miles like so, just like numbers. If they are the same, I can cancel it out. We can cancel units like numbers. If you have the same unit on the top and the bottom, they cancel out. So then we can keep on doing it down here. 14, one hour miles, and we have 5,280 feet per one mile. And then from here, we start canceling out hours. So we have one hour up top would be 60 minutes. <coughs> So on this one, hours to seconds requires two steps. We have hours to minutes to seconds. So here's the first one. So once again, I can cancel out miles here and miles here. I can cancel out hours here and hours here. So I just have to get rid of the minute. So once again, 14 miles, one hour. Mile, 60 minutes. Hour. And we have one minute. And down below, we'd have 60 seconds. So you can see we have miles canceling here, hours canceling here, leaving minutes, minutes canceling here, leaving seconds. So for an answer, we'll have feet over seconds, which is what we want. <coughs> At this point, you do one of two things. You could start canceling or you can and make life easier mathematically. It helps if you don't have a calculator. You should have a calculator, by the way. Or you can put it into a calculator and solve. So 14 
times 5280 is 73,920 feet. And 60 times 60 is 3,600 seconds, which will simplify to 20.53 three repeating feet per second. So the easiest thing to do on this is to make sure that you have this set out so that you can see that things are canceling out. So I have miles canceling out hours and minutes all canceling out. <coughs> okay, what else can I help you guys with? Um, anybody else have anything that they would like me to go over? My, if you're trying to talk, you're, you might have an inline mic muted. Okay, so any, what else can I help you guys with? Because we're kind of in the, me helping you guys with uh, the questions stage. Uh, what issues are you having? Where can I help um, in order for you guys to do good on this midterm? Let me go ahead and hit pause until.